Hi there. Uh, I'm Sandy Kane, the CEO of Real Sourcing Network. And we're going to talk today about how procurement can win the hearts and minds of marketers. Or to put it another way, what are the things that need to be done to either build or improve or improve a relationship between the procurement folks and those folks in marketing services who may or may not understand how much they need the procurement people to help them do their jobs. Uh, to do this today, um, we're going to, um, whoops, wrong screen. Um, we're going to, let me just make sure I can, there we go. Uh, we've got an outstanding panel today to, uh, to work with me. I want to introduce uh, uh, Luis Alvarez from 3M, uh, David Carmanucci from Swedish Match, and Nikki Dillsworth Floyd from, C Floyd from CDK Global. And I learned a long time ago that it's far better to let them introduce themselves than for me to read from some canned bio. So we'll start with Luis and give us a few a uh, few seconds of uh, you and your background, Luis. Appreciate it. Sure. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, yes, my name is Luis Alvarez. I am the Global Strategic Sourcing Manager for Indirect for 3M. Um, I've been in 3M for more than 22 uh, years. The background in supply chain, procurement, um, also finance. Um, we are uh, uh, working right now in in how to globalize more our organization. So one of my key goals for for this and next year is to implement a global global team for indirect sourcing. Great, David. Yeah, hi, my name is Dave Carmanucci. I uh, am here in Swedish Match. Uh, my role is I head up all of procurement in North America, and I also sit on a uh, a team that manages our, our global Swedish Match procurement supply chain functions, et cetera. Uh, I have been with Swedish Match for about nine years. I've been in procurement supply chain for well over 25 plus years, and I would characterize myself as a passionate practitioner of all things procurement supply chain and uh, happy to say I'm kept going by the fact that I learn something new every day. Well, that's encouraging. Uh, while I would assume, David, that just about everybody on the call knows 3M, there may be folks who don't know Swedish Match. Could you t give us a minute about that? Sure. We're, well, we're, we're not a uh, online dating service. Uh, we actually are in the other other tobacco business and we sell other tobacco products globally as well as matches and lighters uh, and that excludes cigarettes actually one of our credos is a world without cigarettes so we focus uh, on the continuum of harm we focus on other tobacco products that we have a firm belief are less harmful great thanks david nikki up to you hi my name is nikki dillsworth floyd i am a sourcing manager at cdk global we are a um, international automotive software company. We also do advertising for the automotive industry, websites and things like, of that nature. I have been in the procurement um, space for over 20 years. I've worked um, at, with IT, technology, telecom, um, vehicles, and even cellular towers. I've worked in the industry of um, cellular phones, um, retail and now in the software company. Great. As I think all of you can see, we've got an outstanding panel and I'm fully expecting that they're going to have some important things to, to talk about that will be of value to those of you on the call. Um, just a quick uh, idea of what we're planning on covering this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to do a quick review of you know, the things that are important about that connection between marketing services and procurement and where we are and what kind of needs to be done to, to move the ball forward to improve that relationship. And then I'm going to open it up to the panel and we're going to cover a whole bunch of questions that relate to that subject. So starting with that, um, I'm going to start with a quote that actually comes from McKinsey and Company um, that's, you know, not brand new, but I think it's very relevant. Um, and basically what it's saying is, you know, to meet today's challenges, the marketers, marketing services need new capabilities. They need sharp analytic skills to pull useful insights from big digital data sets. We all understand that. They need to evaluate the potential of new channels and new service providers 
and they need new ways to measure how efficiently and effectively they use budgets that must now stretch across many categories. And on the face of it, they finished, marketing needs precisely the robust fact-based anal analysis and decision-making capabilities that a high-performing procurement function needs and uses. Uh, I don't think it could be more apropos to our discussion than, than that quote from McKinsey and Company. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, the benefits of marketing procurement or the procurement folks that work with uh, a marketing organization and what they bring to the table. Let's start with improved spend visibility. The procurement people manage the purchase of marketing services of all kinds. And by doing that, it provides an opportunity for accurate and comprehensive account of where those marketing dollars are spent. We all know that without that kind of regiment and documentation, it's very hard to keep track of what you're doing and what you spent it on and how effectively you did so. Uh, that co connection between procurement and marketing services facilitates that. Um, so next point is, is risk mitigation, mitigation, okay? With procurement working with marketing services, um, you have the opportunity through the regiment of the way procurement works to provide support for evidence-based supplier selection, as opposed to simply using a supplier that you've been using for the last 10 years, in spite of the fact that there may be better, more cost-effective, more productive uh, suppliers out there. With the help of procurement, that can happen. Um, also, the procurement people are professionals in terms of contracts. So you get more effective contract preparation and negotiation. And once you have a signed contract, more effective management and administration of those contracts. Next, improved spend optimization. Procurement clearly can help marketers stretch their marketing budget budgets by identifying opportunities for cost reductions and cost avoidance. A lot of people talk about, well, all procurement cares about is saving money. But the point here that needs to be driven across to the marketing people is it's not simply saving money, it's giving the marketing resourcing people an opportunity to use their resources in better and more productive ways because procurement can help them save money. And then there's speed to contract. You know, because of the way procurement operates and understands dealing with the suppliers and contracting, you can have a much better streamlined and efficient procurement process that gets you to market with whatever the marketing people need quicker. And then last and certainly not least is innovation. Um, Frequently, the marketing services folks will continue to do the same thing they did yesterday with the same suppliers. Procurement, because of the experience they have across the board, can support innovation in marketing services by identifying you know, new prospective suppliers who have new technology or differentiated marketing services that can do a lot more than just simply saving the marketing services uh, folks money. So. You know, as, as we look at the kind of state of the art of where we are today, there's a couple of uh, uh, interesting statistics. Some of them are a year or two old, but, but in general, it's true, if not worse than it was said then. First is uh, some data from global, global, global Illity from 2017 that basically said that most procurement departments oversee less than half of their company's global marketing spend so that that solid relationship that needs to be there between marketing and procurement is is just not okay um and also from the worldwide federation of advertisers the point that procurement function typically has between 50 and 80 percent coverage in the marketing spend category and i will tell you from my experience it's closer to 50 than it is 80. and then lastly one other thing from global globality um is that 24 percent of surveyed procurement professionals said that their relationship with the marketing team was challenging i think that's a nice way of putting it or somewhat challenging and another 20 percent said that the relationship was only somewhat open so almost half of the people surveyed said that there was an awful lot of room for improvement in their relationships with the marketing services folks why why is that 
you know, those of us in procurement have the notion that it ought to be painfully obvious why that relationship is important. But, you know, in my experience as I've looked at this, one of the things I see is that there's a lack of leadership on both sides from a procurement standpoint and marketing services where they don't provide at the top leadership that says, hey, you guys have to get together for the common good. That needs to be helped and fixed. And if in addition, we're dealing with folks that generally have some different goals and objectives, or at least they think they do. So that the marketing folks are interested in revenue growth and the growth of the business. And, and they think that procurement has no interest except in saving money. And sometimes that can be a, a disparate uh, set of goals uh, when it's not that hard to put them together and, and meet both goals together. You also tend to see from a marketing standpoint, there's more subjective decision making than some of the objective ways that take place on the uh, procurement side. Okay, that's the background that I wanted to cover. So I want to spend you know the rest of the time taking advantage of the insights and knowledge and experience of uh, of our panel. Uh, and having said that, you know the first the first chart that I want to bring up with some questions uh, are these four. Um, and let me just start, um, you know, with the first one, you know, you know, just how long has your procurement team been involved in sourcing and, and marketing services? David, you want to chime in on that one? Sure. Uh, our procurement team uh, was initiated upon my arrival here at Swedish Match. We did not have a structured procurement organization or an organization at all, structured or otherwise. So the involvement with marketing services began about the uh, a week after I arrived on the scene, and then that in involvement has been evolving, and I'm happy to say successfully so. So, you know, we've been involved as long as we've had procurement, and the length, breadth, depth of the relationship has grown, and we've we've evolved together in a nice direction. As a compliment to that, we'll get to some comments from some of the other folks on the panel, but you know. Go to the second question, David, because it relates to what you just said on the first one. Okay, well, the, what led us to be involved is basically, obviously, marketing is a key function to the organization. Uh, there was a the general acknowledgement from the senior management of the organization that as procurement adds value in all other areas, it could add value in marketing. And then there was a suggestion of go ahead and engage we're not a mandate driven organization and that probably would not have worked well in the culture here. So once we had the organization established and chartered, we went out, sought out our customers and began that engagement and, and has evolved to a, a very close tight relationship now. And uh, we're recognized as a nice collaborative enabling partner of marketing. You, you mentioned you mentioned that you know that connection that involvement started very soon after you got there. Does can you speak about some prior experience you had before you got to Swedish Match where you knew how important it was to make that connection? Absolutely, I spent 14 years in what we'd call big tobacco with uh, Altria and, and associated companies, and uh, that was a prime example of obviously an area where there's some intense and significant spend. It's of high strategic value to the overall organization. And the only way you're gonna bring value is to become a trusted collaborative partner. So that, that helped. And then similarly, prior experience uh, before that with 14 years with, with General Foods and then the combination of all those food companies that Philip Morris companies ended up buying. Uh, same, same perspective, similar approach and Fortunately, similar results, albeit you know, in those organizations, given their larger size, scale, and complexity, the evolution of the relationship took a little longer. Great. Nikki, do you want to comment on those first two questions? Sure. So um, I started with CDK only about 10 months ago, but prior to me starting, um, CDK was a spinoff of ADP. ADP had a, a uh, separate company called ADP Dealer Services. And so it spun off and became CDK. When they spun off to be an independent company, um, 
they really were looking at ways to control costs and drive savings for the organization. And so that happened about four years ago, and that's what led up to that, the reason why procurement became a strong organization or a strong team within the organization. Uh-huh. Great. Okay, let's let's look at this, the bottom half of the chart, okay? Um, Nikki, while, while you're on, talk about those last two questions. Sure. So um, our marketing procurement team, we get involved with everything. So what the, the unique thing about CDK is that uh, while we need to advertise for our company, we also do advertising for our clients. So for uh, many dealers that are so small and they don't have that specialty or someone on their team to do advertising for them, they will reach out to CDK and we do that. So we handle um, dealers from a, a, a true automotive vertical. So um, the, the time sheets, the clocking in, the parts control, uh, websites, and even advertising. So because of that, our team is involved in an array of um, marketing services from marketing um, agency of record, videography, webs, uh, websites, uh, photography, printed ads, social media, paid and natural search, and advertising for our clients. Um, our team is global. Uh, we have an a international company called CDKI. Um, and then our procurement team, the global procurement team, we negotiate all of our agreements for the company. And then when those transactions the individual transactions happen, then the business can go ahead and make those purchases. Um, and we, unless there's a new contract that needs to get signed, if it's part of what we've previously negotiated, then we don't get involved. Um, if it was not part of what was previously negotiated, then we do. Right. So in response to the last piece of that, what percentage would you say your company's total marketing spend is that you guys are involved in? All of it? We are, yes, we are involved in all of it. Like I said, um, we set up the, the actual master agreements and if there's transactions that require an SOW, then we get involved. But if they're buying promotional just pins or um, headphones and things of that nature, we've already negotiated that price and we have it set up in our system and they're free to make those purchases. But right. we're involved with each supplier that we work with. Great. David, you want to chime in on those last two points? Yeah, we, we are involved across the board in, in all types of services that our marketing organization performs, whether that be agency search, agency work, work within the selected agencies, all types of advertising, both print trade that we still utilize as well as digital and other, and other means. Uh, we get involved in bringing management consultants in that we think might be able to help marketing. Uh, we get involved in trade marketing, which can result in in agreements with our trade partners. Uh, we get involved in all sorts of point of purchase, point of sale, display marketing, all print related activities within the marketing arena, uh, digital services, you know, infrastructure based tools that are going to enable the marketers to market better in effect, things like CRM for marketing, other, other digital pieces of infrastructure, whatever they may be. Uh, marketing service desk, things along those lines. So our involvement is fairly pervasive along all the areas of marketing that you might imagine we could be involved in. Great. Luis, do you have anything you want to chime in on any of these things on this page? Yeah, sure. So yeah, we also, we are in, we have more than 40 subcategories where we are involved in, in marketing. Uh, I agree with both, so so we we are uh, we address all of this spend, but something that we are we are uh, um, I mean changing is the concept of self service, so especially in marketing and other key areas for us. So we are working on establishing some thresholds where we see uh, the opportunity to really war when we see the risk is no so high so we establish some some connection with our internal clients and they are the ones that they are being prepared to run 
the self-service model. So this is something that we are working because we want to position ourselves in this maturity uh, or level that we have in our organization to be more strategic. That's why we are right now trying to uh, differentiate some some tactical roles or also some kind of uh, self-service model where we can be more efficient and more strategic. Great. I, I think I think what we've just heard from everybody on the panel is that they're all in situations where there is a significant involvement between procurement and marketing services, either because they managed to, to get it done the right way or the top management insisted on it or whatever. So given that background, okay, uh, what I want to talk about now is is what is it you know that was that was learned uh, you know that oops went a little too far in terms of you know what are the challenges that had to be gotten through to be able to get that and I think this is starting to be an area where our listeners will be able to pick up some points about what they may do to help get them to the point of having as effective a relationship as it appears the three of you have. So as I look at this second page, this next page, you know, you know, the first question of, you know, what challenges did you have in building that effective relationship between procurement and marketing? Nikki, you want to talk about that? Yes. And, and while you're talking, we, you can really address all three questions because they're really all related. Okay. So, um, as it comes to challenges, I, when I first started at CDK, I faced quite a few because again, the company was just evolving um, and the, the department was only in place for four years. However, many of the associates within the company had been with the previous um, ADP dealer services. So they had been around for years and they were allowed to operate however they saw fit. So me coming in, they saw me as a challenge. Um, and so that was my biggest issue um, and um, coming and then they had gone through this period where everything was about cost savings and they thought that that was my whole purpose. And so um, and, and like you said, Sandy, how I overcame the challenge was explaining that, you know, you marketing, you're here to be efficient and and to focus on marketing. That's your whole focus. That's your whole purpose. Mine is to ensure that you don't get yourself caught in unfavorable positions in the future with any suppliers, um, that we're following the company policies and procedures, um, and that we're getting any savings or value adds that we possibly can with suppliers. So letting them know that you have a purpose and I have a purpose and let's just identify what those are, that was how, what helped me overcome a lot of those challenges because they, they saw me then as a partner versus um, someone that, that, was, that, that was just all about cost savings. You, you just didn't mention how charming you are though. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> Um, some of the benefits that I had to bring to the table is, as I mentioned in my introduction, I have a wide array of procurement background. It's not just in marketing, it's also within technology. And as a lot of marketing is moving to technology with email and as someone mentioned, CRMs, things like that, text messaging, um, I have that benefit of being able to add benefit to negotiating with suppliers, what questions to ask, because a lot of marketing individuals are um, all about the traditional agencies and things like that, print and um, advertising, and they're not really up to speed on technology. Well, that's what I found in my career. And so me bringing that to the table was also helpful. Great. Uh, Luis, you want to chime in on these three points? Yeah, so I, I can say that the main challenges, uh, uh, adding what was mentioned, is is under, from from procurement is understanding business needs. This was a uh, you know in three N we we are like a, a five a four big uh, uh, companies, uh, and then we have like a thirty divisions or so small companies in, inside of them. But the lack probably of the main challenges from businesses to us is. You don't know my business. You don't know the, uh, my, my, my business model. So I think this is something that we address and we, we 
uh, recognize the, the time that we need as a procurement to spend to really understand our business needs, right? Understanding the business models. So that's something that we, we, we saw that, that a big opportunity to really be in a, in a better connection with our uh, uh, marketers on that, on businesses, but understanding their business model. So what they want to have, what, what is, the, what is the, their strategy uh, in demand generation? We as a procurement, we need to be part of that. We need to understand that and uh, also be part of those discussions when they are uh, creating the, their, their plan for the next year. So, so when we understand that, and this, this also requires a lot of attention, a lot of preparation for us, right? So, so I think that was one of the key changes when they are starting to see on procurement an advisor, was, but, but uh, it's most important someone, and they can see what is the value for them, right? So we started to make that changes, understanding their business models, we talk about a business uh, very focused in, in, in consumer, but also other focused in, in more in industrial, in, in, in mining. So, so with the, the different markets that we, we work, we need to have professionals in procurement and they understand also the business models. So that, that's why one of our, our challenges and, and we are right now addressing this and we are seeing right now a big, big connection and better connection with our businesses because they see in procurement not only someone that they can uh, comply or they can help them with the contracting, but also professional, they understand their businesses. Great. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that are kind of that kind of fit into uh, what's on the screen that we've gotten from uh, uh, one of our uh, listeners. And let me just read you the question. You know, what do you need to do to educate yourself and your team on new solutions and technology in the marketing space to present to the stakeholders, and you know, and and then once you've done that, you know, how do you how do you implement uh, a new marketing system or program to ensure ongoing usage of those new things? Anybody? I'll take a I'll take a crack at it. Um, you know, one one of the things you need to do is kind of understand those new technologies, where they exist, uh, how, how accessible they are, et cetera, and new approaches, whatever the case may be. And then more importantly, understand what of any relevance they have to what your marketing team might be doing. And then if, if you do discover that, you know, kind of help connect the dots to that and see what kind of, you know, information sharing and conversations then bring to light you know, a potential opportunity and then the exploration of that opportunity and then some decision that, hey, you know, that new technology is useful based on the collaborative conversation and let's kind of move forward and dip our toe in the water and try to test, pilot, or access it. Do uh, do any of you have any specific examples where you had to deal with that that you can share? So right now, um, we're in the midst of working on something um, that is exactly answers that question. So um, one of my superiors were in a meeting with one of our business partners, and they were talking about some of the challenges they were facing. Um, and it was a, about um, making sure that they had the resources to address any calls that need to be handled and going out to clients. So it was managing the time of um, resources, location, and distance of where they were and who and availability. And so because I work on projects in previous companies, I knew exactly where to start. And if you don't know where to start, there's always a lot of research um, mechanisms that are out there Gartner is out there, Forrester is out there. And so you, you go out to some of these companies and you can ask them, this is what I'm looking for. Um, who are the best players in this space? And you get that information and you set up meetings. That's what we're doing now. We've set up meetings so we can have a few suppliers come in and demo and show the value of bringing on a company to solve that issue. Interesting. Anything else anybody wants to add to that? Yeah, I'm going to the same direction. So we, we are we are working in, in, in when we see a, 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 we recognize what is the business needs, right? So we go to the market and we invite our partners to really 
doing a workshop, right? So not only with one, so two or three of them, and then we say, well, this is our problem, this is our opportunity. How you address this? So I think being open with them. So uh, uh, now we are right now in a moment that we need to be more open with our partners, and they really can help us to solve the problem. Uh, we are doing more on that every, every day, so it's not just a matter of, okay, this is the, 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 the needs. Uh, no, it's more working together to create a solution. So we are talking about here is more innovation for service. So this is something that we are seeing more every day. Uh, and and the, the solution is coming working together, not just, not just for one side. So this is a big difference, a big transformation when we see and working with our partners. That's good. I, I, I wanted to add one point to that as well. I mentioned at the very outset that I was the CEO of Real Sourcing Network. Uh, I think most of you know who we are, but we are a print management software company that works with our clients to help them improve the productivity of their print procurement, either by using our software themselves or by having us do the procurement for them. One of the things that we have experienced is we make a point of making sure that our clients understand and the people that we're focused mostly with are the procurement people, that those people understand all of the technology capability that we have so that they can then use that to help the marketing people better do their jobs, not just to make them save money or be more productive, but you know maybe this... Uh, campaign that they're working on could be done better if we take advantage of this uh, you know digital technology or other kinds of things that we can do from a print standpoint so the message that i get to say when i get that is that it's important for the procurement people to have a very good understanding of the capability of their suppliers that can best be used to improve what the marketing folks are doing that's the point that i wanted to make moving on um couple of points here about you know what's happened to improve how's the relationship between marketing and and procurement evolved over these last few years and you know and and how has it expanded in terms of scope and in what ways uh anybody want to kick in on that feel free yeah this is Luis. so yeah as mentioned um i i think this was evolving uh, over the time uh, we, 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 I can say that uh, probably we started just being a, as a compliance area, uh, more tactical activities, just focusing contracting, and then we evolved in this journey, really understanding the business needs, position ourselves more in a coordinated, a coordinated way. So working with them, uh, starting to be part of the uh, budget plan discussions. Uh, and also how to connect more the supplier capability to their business needs. So I, I think now we, it's, it's an evolution on that. Uh, I can say that the that in the in the time when we just were just pure con, uh, contracting or, or tactical, uh, the the relationship was so reactive, right? So I can say today we are more in the mode of of providing solution to the businesses. So I think this is, and this is important for us to connect those those uh, value added from our partners to really the business needs. And that's part of why we need to spend more time understanding their business uh, models and also understanding what is in the market, right? Technology, uh, uh, what else we can, how we can connect those those uh, uh, dots that we have right now we see in the market with our business needs. And this is evolving, right? So five years ago, uh, the, the, the traditional advertising and now it's changing with well, social media and now and we understand that those in procurement we need to be uh, on top of that and then provide those solutions and those uh, the different solution to our our businesses okay anybody else want to chime in on that one yeah this is dave i, I mean uh, how it evolved is was basically a, a journey of discovery initially both personally and capability discovery as it relates to the function, and then some some evolution of value demonstration through that. And I, I use kind of a, a a baseball analogy. You know, we we had a few singles here and there and some doubles and an occasional homer. And that that really accentuated both the uh, the business value and business acumen that that the procurement could bring in collaboration with the marketing team. 
and then so it went from a bit of a genteel push mode into a pull mode where you know marketing was approaching us and sitting in the office and welcoming and and asking for the collaboration because we've demonstrated the value that we could bring right um you talked in in your response to that david you really talked about how it has evolved where do you see it evolving into the future yeah, I mean, I, I see it continuing to evolve into an integrated business value enabling partner relationship. And, it, and, and I'm already beginning to see the, you know, the beginning of that where, you know, I might just be sitting in the office of the VP of marketing, just having some general conversations about all things business, how our business is going, sharing perspective. And then from that may or may not come a a procurement initiative, but we're, we've been able to kind of achieve the status of valued partner, if you will, just based on strong, you know, relationships are built between and amongst people. So that, that was a good starting block. And then, you know, the, the value proposition and demonstrating what we can do and recognize as, hey, not just a, not just a valuable procurement partner, but guess what, a valuable business partner. Okay. Nikki, you have anything you want to add to that? Sorry, I had it on mute. I agree with David. Um, the relationship between procurement and marketing has evolved quite a bit over the years. Um, where we used to be more transactional, I have seen it grown into more of a partnership where um, they are calling on us. I know at um, a previous company I worked with, when I started working with the marketing team there, um, it, it ha happened because of a nightmare issue. They had gotten themselves in a certain predicament and they needed the help of procurement to get them out. They didn't see the benefit of working with us in the forefront, but they definitely wanted to work with us after they had gotten themselves in this situation. And us being able to um, work through that and getting the win for them was allowed us to show our value and what we have to bring to the table. And that helped establish the relationship and it also helped define the relationship. And so they didn't see us as one, as a, a team trying to take over and do the marketing for them, but more of partner with them and looking out for the betterment of their business. Well, what you're basically saying is there's no better way to start or improve a relationship than to show them that you actually did something that was very important to them yes. and successfully. Correct. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, just got another good question in that I want to share with all of you and hear your thoughts. And basically what it says is, is that marketing wants to spend effectively, not necessarily spend less, so that they get the best bang for their budget that they've got. So what do you guys need to do to focus on budget optimization versus simply cutting costs. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a matter of cash creation conversations versus budget reduction conversations and driving the fact that through the collaboration, you know, you can get more value slash bang for your buck out of your budget through this collaborative cash creation process with procurement. Nikki, Luis, anything? Yeah, so um, in, in, in part of your presentation, Sandy, you mentioned, you know, having visibility to spend and things of that nature. One thing that a lot of our constituents don't have is they don't have that visibility. They don't see all the suppliers that we work with. And one of the easiest ways and that many of our constituents don't realize to um, drive value and not just cutting costs is to leverage the, the relationships we already have in place. Um, so many marketing teams nowadays are, are broken up into um, advertising, print, uh, social media, and what they don't realize is they have some of the same or similar suppliers that they work with. And rather than us having 10 suppliers that can provide the same service, we need to leverage the relationships we already have or better the relationships and make them stronger and increasing value with um, just one 
And then that can that alone can just decrease our costs. And it, it's not just, you know, just save, 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 but you also want to build a relationship and a partnership, just like we want to build one with our partners within the company. We want to build it with our suppliers. And that's a good way of doing it. Great. Yeah, in 3M also we have changed our approach to our businesses. So no longer talking just on on cost reduction. Uh, we we see that just this approach on cost reduction is not getting really the 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 right the right uh, collaboration with our businesses. We are talking more now in terms of ROI, return on investment. So how much we can maximize the the use of a budget. I agree with that statement. I think uh, now we are seeing a different approach, a different collaboration with our businesses. When they start to see that we are aligned with them in the same, with the same objective, but also we want to maximize the, the use of the budget, the ROI is, is now a different conversation. So I, I think this is something that we as a procurement, we need to understand that not all the areas are the same. There are different focus on here, all right? So, uh, especially when you work with different areas, you need to identify what is the right approach, what is the right alignment that you need both areas need to need to have, right? And ROI is now one of the the key concepts that we are starting to use more, and we have the engagement with the businesses on that. Right. Okay. Let me get to the uh, to the to the last point. Whoops, not that one. Uh, this one. Um, basically, you know, what's the advice that you've got for the folks on the phone? You know, who would like to see procurement play a role or a better role in the sourcing for marketing services? And in, and in that advice, what are the pitfalls? What are the first steps? What suggestions do you have? David, let's start with you. Well, I'd say, you know, build your approach on sound relationship foundational basis and get to know the people, the process, you know, look before you leap, demonstrate your conversational value and and, and establish a strong relationship first. And you know, the pitfalls are in how you establish that, you know, there some people have a perspective on, you know, purchasing as we all walk around with a hat that says I buy cheap. You know, you had to overcome whatever existing perceptions might be there to change the the paradigm, the look, the, the feel. And then, you know, don't feel like you have to solve everything all at once in a big bang manner and you know deliver this massive first step of success and value it's okay to incrementally do that and, and grow your way into the relationship as they will with you good points nikki so i think in my world what i've seen a lot is one of the biggest pitfalls procurement does is being inconsistent uh, we want a seat at the table. We want to make sure that everyone is following the policies that we put in place and the procedures, and it has to be a certain way. However, as soon as one leader comes by and challenges it, we, we let it fall. Or we we let it fall just because, you know, we didn't, we start doing other things. We start focusing on, on other um, projects. And that has been a major issue for a couple of companies I've seen, is that the procurement leadership and the procurement team isn't consistent in what they're trying to do. If we want a seat at the table, we need to sit there and make sure that we are consistent in our message. Um, one of the critical, what I think is a critical first step for any procurement team is if you're looking to go down a certain path, create a plan of action that's shared with all of the leadership within the company and make sure you have their buy-in. Um, if you don't have their buy-in, you know, you're going to that you're going to have an issue because it comes from the top down. And we want to make sure that senior leadership is on board. Um, one of the suggestions that I have is you have to make sure that you have the right team members in place. If you don't, they won't be able to drive, um, to, to assist you in driving that plan of action. And you wanna make sure that that team is in place before you implement your plan. Okay, Luis? My first recommendation um, so is, is to spend time, start just spending time understanding the, the business models. So we need to be, part of that discussion and we need to be we need to spend our time really understanding that 
And second is, is to establish some kind of governance with our businesses in terms to really see what is our uh, supply base and also how we are going to work together on that. So, and, and that's important is to have a, a strong um, um, connection, but also from a business standpoint also, who, who are, they need to own that part as well as, as, we, as we are doing. So we cannot work just sourcing suppliers or cost reduction. This is, this is not just, just from sourcing. So we, don't, we change our, our approach, talking about ROI, but also having a, a establishing a governance process where we can work and we have a central, central organization that we can really work with the businesses that will help on that, on that journey, right? So, and, and finally, is how we make connection with our rice partners or suppliers understanding the capabilities, technology, the value added that we can connect with our business models. So if we don't have that connection between business models, governance, and supplier capability. So this is the strategy that we need to build. Uh, and, and also how we spend time connecting those. So, so this for me is, is kind of the formula where we need to address the connection between our key businesses, our businesses, uh, the sourcing strategy, but also as our, our partners on that. Very interesting. A question just came in that I think is interesting that along these lines, you know, do you guys attend any events or conferences with the marketing teams? And if so, what ones do you recommend? That is a good question. And unfortunately, I have not but I would love to in the future. Um, being with the company for a short period of time, I just haven't had a chance to do it, but I think that that is a great idea. Yeah. Ron, we do attend some, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Excuse me. But no, go ahead. Please go ahead. We do attend some ANA functions with, with our marketing team uh, jointly, and sometimes we even host some here, and that, that seems to be a pretty good forum that, that they find value in, and, and we do as well. So. That, that's one thing. And then we, we may go to some trade shows specific to our channel of trade, et cetera, with, with the marketing folks and occasionally some other just informational events, either hosted by our current, current supply base or just general industry related events. Louise, yeah, anything? This a, yeah, this is a very good point. In, in this journey that I mentioned, right, so one of the key areas really to connect with our businesses is to be part of these events. So in our case, uh, we encourage and also um, our marketing category leaders, they are part of the trade show, for example. It's not only to, to see how we expose our products or our, or our solutions, but also understanding the capability on our, on our suppliers, for example, right? So it's, it's both sides. It's understanding what is our solution, but also what play is, is in, on our supplier that is performing the, the activity, for example, in just in the case of trade shows. Also, we are part of some focus group, for example, where we see, okay, we are part of, 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 of with the market seeing that uh, 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 part of the, uh, okay, you have your insights versus the, the supplier, uh, how they are performing in our site from sourcing also adding value and being being together so we can say this is my insight from a sourcing standpoint and then both together we we make clear what is the performance of, of our partners so so that's key being part of those uh, events together that will help them to see if we are working with the right partner or not so that's why it's important again being um, a business partner is different than just being only a, con a, a contracting a resolution or contracting a support. So that's a big difference when we see how we can evolve and how we can add value to our businesses. Terrific. Uh, let me add one piece of advice uh, that is more generic than everything we've been talking about. At the end of the day, what we're talking about here is what is necessary to build a real good working relationship between two different teams, the procurement team and the marketing services team. This may sound kind of trite, but it's not. I would heartily recommend to anyone who has never read this book or read it a long time ago that they should read it again. And I'm talking about Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. I, I think he wrote the book maybe 60 or 70 years ago. It's actually still in print, 
Uh, it's certainly available in your library, and I would heartily recommend it because the things he talks about and the things he recommends go a long way towards helping people build relationships. And then the specifics of the details that you need for those relationships kind of follow. He talks about the fundamentals of what's necessary to build the relationship. And I would heartily recommend the book to anyone who either hasn't read it or read it 40 years ago. Uh, read it again uh, from that standpoint. Um, that's all I've got. Are there any things uh, that any of you on the panel would like to add to what we've talked about? Or I will ask, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, nothing further for me at this point. And the other thing I was going to say is that if there's anybody on the panel that we've gotten some good questions, but if there are any others and you can type pretty quickly before we sign off, we'd be happy to address them. So I'll give you a minute or so. Uh, while we're waiting for that, let me take the opportunity to thank our panel. You folks were terrific. You know, having, having met you guys before we did this, I was kind of confident that you'd be as good as you were, but you you did just great. And we really appreciate your opportunity. And I hope those of you on the phone got value out of this discussion. Um, I don't see any further questions. So on that basis, we will sign off. I will tell you that we have recorded this so that if you or any of your colleagues would like to be able to watch it and listen to it at a later time, uh, you'll be able to do so. Thank you That's, for having me. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.